I didn't make out with the boys that they made out with. Dear Coco, I have been suffering from the problem of social anxiety for quite a few years. Can you make a video on how to become more socially open? Hello everyone, this is Coco and today's video is going to be about social anxiety. I mentioned in my video on how to become more confident that I used to be very socially anxious. When I say socially anxious, I'm not just referring to being introverted, but the physical reactions that I get when I get put into social situations. If you ask my mom, my sister, or anyone around me when I was very little, I had such a trouble going to public spaces or going up to customer service people to ask for anything. So even if it's over the phone, if I pick up the phone and it's a voice that I don't recognize, I panic. And if I go to McDonald's and they don't give me tomato sauce slash ketchup with my fries, then I, I, I cannot go up there and ask for it. I'll stand around the counter for ages, eyeing out if I see any like ketchup, and if I don't see it, I just walk away. And even if they come up to me and approach me and be like, hey, how can I help you? I don't really have the guts to be like, hey, I'm looking for ketchup. I'll just make a very quick eye contact and just leave. So that was me growing up for a big part of it. And then it kind of you know, evolved into me in like a social situation where in high school, you know, people have these little house parties and I'll go there and be like, oh my gosh, I don't have anything to offer in this conversation. I don't watch the TV shows that they watch. I, I don't play the sports that they played. I didn't make out with the boys that they made out with. And I felt like just the person that I am is not interesting enough for people to stop and talk to me. And if I say something, there's a very high chance of me making a fool of myself. At that point of my life, my English was pretty bad and oftentimes I would make grammatical mistakes. So that really fit into my social anxiety when conversing with people who are native English speakers. And consequently, my social anxiety often ties to panic attacks where I would have to go into the bathroom. I kind of just accepted the fact that I'm not a sociable person and that I don't have to be. You know, I have so many hobbies outside of socializing with people. Like next time they ask me to come to a place like this, I'll just stay at home and watch Netflix or knit or paint or do something else and just not be, you know, vulnerable in that kind of environment. But, 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 but everything changed. And as you can see now, I have no trouble articulating uh, and presenting myself and you know expressing my feelings and sharing my ideas and under social situations, I can usually handle it pretty well at this point. Pretty well. So how did I fix it? Let's jump into it. First of all, obviously we need to figure out the core problem. I would like to consider myself as a problem solver, so I always try to find the core of an issue. And with social anxiety, the core is self-consciousness. And it's not just like insecurity that we're talking about. In this case, it's literally the consciousness that you have on yourself. You always, always, always put all your emphasis on yourself and you magnify every little thing that you do. So to fix that, I tried shifting the consciousness from myself to others, or more specifically to another person. And what I did is, when I'm under a social situation, especially if there are a lot of people that are talking all at once, I try to put all my attention on one person and just watch them. It doesn't have to be an acquaintance or someone that I know, but if I watch everything that they do, and if I pay attention to the things that they have to say, I kind of lose track of myself and the perk to that is that not only are you less anxious because you are loosening up your senses but you also appear to be more likable after showing general curiosity in a person you can also just imagine yourself as an investigator and you're investigating this one person so you're like watching everything that they're doing and you're asking them a lot of questions being genuinely curious about what they have to say and this is essentially the spotlight effect because we always overestimate how much spotlight we have as an individual. We always feel anxious or scared or fearful because we feel like so many eyes are on us, right? We feel like that, oh, maybe if I say this stupid thing, they're gonna remember. And every single time they see me, they're gonna associate me with that. Or if I say something and it's kind of awkward, then I ruin the whole mood for everybody. So I might as well just shut up. But the reality is you're not the spotlight. And the spotlight changes 
by the second. After you speak, someone else speaks. And one thing that I found really enlightening and helpful was Taylor Swift's commencement speech at NYU. She talks about all the mistakes that she made and the idea of everyone making mistakes. And it kind of just opened up my eyes like, damn, a global celebrity like Taylor Swift. She's embarrassed herself and she's done things that she probably regretted. Obviously, we all know who she is, but no one's gonna be thinking about the mistakes she made on a daily basis. Even the people that are directly associated with her. And when we bring up Taylor Swift, we're not gonna be like, oh yeah, the girl who did XYZ. She's super talented and she has so many other things for us to remember her by. So it's really a mindset change that helps me overcome these tiny little moments of anxiousness. And the next mindset change that I had is attributed to James Clear and his best-selling book, Atomic Habits. Honestly, I kind of geek out about that book every once in a while because it really helped me form a lot of good habits. But over here, we're not talking about habits, we're talking about identity. Because in the book, he brought up this idea of perceiving yourself with a certain identity instead of a certain action. For instance, if a person is trying to quit smoking, and someone offers them a cigarette, instead of saying, hey, um, I'm quitting smoking, so I'm not gonna smoke, they could instead say, hey, I am a non-smoker. So similarly, instead of viewing social situations as if, hey, I need to go out and socialize and become more social, I can just perceive myself as an outgoing person, a likable person, a sociable person, a personable person, anything like that. Because most of the time, you are your own hater. You're like your biggest hater. You would look at something and be like, mm, um, I know myself, I can't do that. This is me, this is gonna be me forever. And as a middle child, for the longest time, I just believed that when God made us three siblings, my sister and my brother were the ones that are supposed to be extroverted and likable and just outgoing and confident. And I was just supposed to be that introverted girl who knows how to do things right, but doesn't really know how to socialize. You win some, you lose some. You take some, you don't take some. So I thought I just wasn't gifted for the sociable part. Compared to them, I can never catch up, so like why bother? I should just focus on my strength and just do what I'm good at and just never socialize. But that is not true. And speaking of atomic habits, I generally just recommend people to read more books It's because there are a lot of takeaways that you can get from reading and there are a lot of classics like How to Win Friends and Influence People and there's also a book that I really like called The Courage to Be Disliked and obviously it's a lot more beautifully put than me rambling in front of a camera so I would recommend you guys checking those out I also recommend books that are, you know, biography or autobiographies because when you read those books, you realize, damn, like everyone starts from the bottom. And I think that's kind of the purpose of me speaking about this topic because I started from the bottom. I was very introverted. I was very like bad at talking and socializing. Like I promise, I was really bad. And I got to the point that I am here. So honestly, everything is possible. And the same reason for why we should read more because everything is learnable and figure outable and changeable. Even something like social anxiety, where it seems more like a mental health problem or a, you know, innate thing. It actually is all in your head too, so you can overcome it bit by bit, pieces by pieces. And now I'm gonna help you with some actionable tips to actually tackle the problem. So let's get started. The first tip that I have is to write a worry list before you go to any social situations. And this kind of sounds counterintuitive because it's kind of like, why are you encouraging me to be worried? But actually, writing it down makes you less worried or anxious in the actual situation because it's almost like a place to vent it out. So I'll give you an example. I can write down something like, I am scared that A is going to think my English is bad. I am scared that B is going to find out that I have a crush on him. I am afraid that I am going to do something really stupid and everyone at school will know it the next day. I am afraid that I look really bad. I am afraid that my friends think I am embarrassing to be around. I write everything down before I go to a social situation so it's not all in my head once I do start socializing with them. And the funny thing is, when you go back home and you look at that list, you're like, wow, nothing on that list happened. And even if something did happen, it's gonna be one out of like 10 things. So when you look at that in perspective, you're like, 
hmm, I do overthink a little bit. Good thing is, you can look at it and be like, wait, actually, I'm pretty good at this. I managed to like avoid all of it. So I did a good job. I'm pretty good at socializing. And the second tip that I have is to bring someone that you're familiar with. Honestly, even until today, I am a pretty sociable person now and I don't really get scared but I still prefer bringing a friend or a close friend or even an acquaintance to an event or somewhere just so I have this little sense of security inside of me. Stepping your foot out the door is the first step and anything that can help you do that is good and positive. So you can start small, go to like a small gathering, bring a really close friend and start cracking from that point onwards and slowly 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 you can fly on your own and my last and final tip is actually to watch variety TV shows I grew up watching a lot of Asian variety shows and that actually helped me a lot to observe what makes a person more likable or to observe what makes a person funnier I encourage you to watch variety TV shows or any interviews or radio shows where there's two people interacting and just pay close attention to how one person make another person feel comfortable and if you have to honestly actively take notes sometimes I will take notes on like oh this person did this that's why I find this person likable, relatable, or funny, you know? So these little things actually, like, they add up. And if I watch, like, an interview, I would pay attention to the interviewer and the words that they say and the way that they ask questions and the way that they make the other person feel comfortable to see how to socialize better. Because, again, everything is learnable, everything is figureoutable. And if you're a person who cares about growth and learning, then you can do this. You can actually do this. At the end of the day, social Socializing is just as easy as every single other task you do in your life and the reason why you fear it is because there's not enough practice you're reading into little things and you're brainwashing yourself into this identity that doesn't belong to you so no matter how introverted you are it's just a matter of time you, you need to take baby steps maybe it will take you five years that's fine but by the end of it you're gonna get there and it's there's no better time to start than now so you know, go out there, embarrass yourself if you have to, but as you go, you're gonna learn and you're gonna realize you're a very charismatic individual. So that's my story and my tips and my ideas. I hope you found it relatable or helpful. As usual, feel free to ask me any questions or leave any comments you want. I do read every single comment. So that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for staying tuned for another episode of Dear Coco. I will see you guys next time. Bye. I look for the things I don't